Hey everybody, this is Presto. Corporal Massage. And you are listening to episode 53 of the Nintendo Ads Podcast. We got a direct! Whoop, whoop. We got... We didn't just get a direct. We got the direct that actually lived up to expectations. Even though there were no expectations because they just like announced it. And then they were like, oh yeah, we're going to have a direct. And it's going to be amazing. But you don't know what's in it. Um, Yeah, so obviously we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Direct. uh, And everything in it. And covering what we cared about and what you should care about. And some stuff that you really shouldn't care about. But we're going to talk about it anyway. Um, If you are listening, good on you, audio people. Um, But... This episode is being streamed live to our Facebook page. Um, So if you ever want to catch our episodes live, I would say tune in on Mondays, but this is Friday. This is is rather unusual. I mean, we're also doing this out of order because the direct was just the other day. Yeah, yeah. We had a feeling. I had a feeling. I think we had in our our calendar that uh, the Nintendo Direct, we were planning for a Nintendo Direct sometime in February. We did. We looked at the past two years, because we've been doing this for that long, and we were like, the Direct happened sometime around these months. We should be ready for it to drop any day around then. But we usually just they ex- give, I feel like usually they give more notice. This was like 24 hours notice that they were just like, surprise! Yeah, I, I thought, thought that we would have a, they're pretty early in our, you know, projected window, <clears throat> and they were also, like, sudden about it. Who dat? Oh, it's me. Thank you, me, for liking <laughs> the stream and sharing it. Um, so yeah, let's just, uh, let's just jump right into the damn thing. Actually, hold on, wait, I'm going to share it. Um, before we jump in, would you say, is it a fair assessment uh, that this is one of the best directs in recent memory. No. No? I will, I will say it is the second best direct George! that we've had. King George! George. Welcome George. in, sir. Oh, it is the I second... That's not I, I did not steal your, your things. That's a fair assessment. Hell yeah, King George. Cheers to you. Welcome in. I think this is the second best direct we've had because I will argue that the best direct we've had was where we got some Legend of Zelda news. This is a crumb, though. It was. A crumb. I, it was. It was something. It was absolute something, and we didn't get anything this time. So that is not. Oh, anything on Zelda? Yeah. 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 Don't don't defend Nintendo. I'm just saying. I love that shirt, by the way. That's that looks Thank like something you. that would be in my closet. <laughs> it's also a fair assessment that one of you may black out from liver failure in the next hour. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's going to be one of those episodes. Huh? Um, I would say this was the most fun stuff, surprising stuff, stuff that I'm actually going to buy in a direct since they announced Splatoon 3. Splatoon 3 was like hype overload for me when they announced yeah. it. Um, yo, Mimi Chan! There's a name we haven't Whoa. seen in a while. Good morning, Mimi Chan. You you may not have seen it, seen her, but I have. She's been on a couple of my streams. Ah, she isn't. Well, I've missed the last couple of streams because I was away. Yeah. So, but you anyway, yeah, Mimi Chan, welcome in. Uh, again, if you're listening to this on audio after the fact. Ow. Uh, we stream our episodes live, so if you see us or hear us talking to random people, it's not figments of our imagination or the ghost, the ghost of LaCroix past. It is the live chat that we're, that we're chatting with. Um, so yeah, before we kick it off, let's do the, the typical rundown. What are you drinking, Corporal? What, oh, what could be in your cup or can? Mountain Dew! I literally just saw you drink LaCroix. You can't fool me. Are you double fisting LaCroix and Mountain Dew? Yeah, bro. It like balances it out. Like one's healthy and one's just battery acid. So if you put them together, it's like 
justify yeah, it. I, I I need water intake with my sugar intake. Yeah. <laughs> Got my sleep routine back so I can watch you guys again. Awesome. Yeah, Mimi Chan. So we're going to be doing the direct episode and then directly after the direct the episode. Direct episode. I think we're going to be streaming some Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> um, I am back on my fruity beer bullshit because <laughs> it was like 50 degrees and that is reason enough. For me to bust out the fruity drinks for the rest of the season until it like snows again in the fall or the winter. I love I love me some mango car. And we had like Mexican food for dinner, like tacos and sauces and stuff like that. And this is like mm, mm, so good. It's delicious. Um, Corporal, what you been playing and what you been playing with the little guy? I've just been playing Pokemon. Like, straight up. Jacob, Little Red, and I have gone back and forth with doing uh, monster uh, Pokemon, monster catching. <laughs> um, and that, that's really it. No, you have to avoid coffee. Mimi Chan. That's why they make decaf, right? You can still get the flavor. Um, I have been also playing some Pokemans. Um, I'm up to five star, five star rank. I can catch guys up to level 50. Got some alphas. I got the water mount guy. You're um, ahead of me. And then, of course, I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise. I've been playing, yep. I've been playing this game called Monster Hunter Rise. It's very fun. It's really just Gunlance Simulator at this point um, <laughs> because I am like... So I, I use Gunlance, I started getting into Gunlance, but now I'm like actually into Gunlance. I'm experimenting with builds, experimenting with different shell types. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, mostly on Switch still, believe it or not. Mostly still on Switch, because that's where I have my real my real builds. PC is fun, and I'm enjoying playing through, in, playing through at like the higher specs and everything. <laughs> but I feel like everything I do there is, like, non-permanent versus my Switch file. I know that I'm building, I'm making progress, I'm getting HR, I'm getting materials. Like, it's, like, a permanent thing. So, anyway, that's all I've been playing. Also, I have to say, I think I may have shortchanged, even though I did praise it, I think I may have shortchanged Windjammers 2. And I'll tell you why. Uh -oh. And then we will actually start the episode. Um, Windjammers 2, you know, we did a giveaway. We did a stream, I think, last week. Excellent game. Um, but I had the opportunity to play it with a group of people in person. And holy cow, it was the star of the show. We played some Monster Hunter. We played Smash. We played uh, Rocket League. We played Streets of Rage 4. This is over a couple of nights. Um, and then we played Windjammers 2, and Windjammers 2 brought the hype. People were screaming. Everyone was excited. Like, if you're if you're at a party, and it's so easy to pick up. Like, anybody can learn it in, like, five minutes. But if you're at a party, win, just put on Windjammers 2. I promise you, it delivers. It is so much more fun in person. It's sort of like when we played Killer Queen Black. We played it online, and we finally played it in person. And it was yeah. just like the next level that's exactly how when jammers 2 is anyway um also a bit of news speaking of dot emu games oh um, yeah teenage mutant ninja turtles revealed i wish they revealed a release date but they revealed that master splinter is going to be a playable character when the game launches sometime this year um, and they, I think it was like PlayStation Underground or something, did like eight minutes of gameplay with the developers, and whew, it looks so good. I am so excited. I think you might enjoy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles more than you enjoy Streets of Rage 4. I mean, probably, because I appreciate and have a uh, nostalgia factor for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. So. And it seems like it's still got really clean mechanics and it's got like, you know, technical stuff and you charge your meter and you do a special, but it's definitely more arcadey and less 
like Streets of Rage 4, when you get in the harder difficulties, you have to be really technical. Like, it basically turns into, like, a fighting game. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles seems more focused on the casual fun aspect of it while still having some depth. So I think it's going to, I think it's going to crush it. Yeah. And it's a big, it's a big title. Like it's got the nostalgia factor for yeah. everybody yep. who was alive in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Okay. All that said, the direct. There we go. That was, that was more. <laughs> um, so I have these in roughly the same order that Nintendo lists them on their site for the recap, okay. um, which is kind of like the major features and then like everything else. Like that's how. So I just, uh, you people who are watching at home, you can see that I'm looking very distracted because I was trying to find this image. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see the images out up there live. But there is a... <clears throat> what is it? Pull... It's just a white uh, box. Can't... I'm trying to see if I can get it to focus. It won't focus. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, 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 yes. Yes. It's just barely there. It's so... But... You can really tell how fish-eyed your camera is when you hold it. Yeah. Because it was like... <laughs> But it, it, it's an image that basically shows uh, 2017 Nintendo Direct. Oh, it message it! Message it to me. I can put it on the stream. Oh yes. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Messages. Bring it up. Sorry, audio people. Audio only people. This is sad. <coughs> so um, you're getting the image presser now. Oh, I got it. So while Presto pulls this up, I will just give a quick quick edit of it. But 2017, the Nintendo Direct released for 2017. All right, it's up and there. And it announced the Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, Mario Rabbits, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. See, just put that in perspective. 2017. 2022, we... This graphic is slightly off because I will make the argument that we got absolutely no information about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. It's still supposed to come out this year, right? It comes out this year, yes, but we didn't get any information about it. We did get information, though, about Splatoon 3, mm. Mario Rabbit's Sparks and Hope, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So from 2017 to 2022, we're just now getting the sequels or the the next installment of these titles i feel like that is telling of like you you look at things like uh fallout or call of duty or halos where it's like every two years there is something every three years or something halo did just recently has went on a five-year hi hiatus before they were not released a new game but besides that like even still 2017 2018 2019 2021 or 2020 2021 2022 you're at that five-year mark so microsoft got so much beef for putting halo on a five-year hiatus in order to rework this and the reason they did is because they were rechanging everything about halo and their platform and built a whole new engine so that they can create this new game nintendo what have you done you just you made sequels but, I, I'm just put, I'm putting that out there as before we really get into the deep the depths of this direct, just so that that prefaces what we're going into. Yeah, and I think I would rather wait longer between sequels than whoa, hey camera, hey camera, why don't you, why don't you <laughs> calm down, why don't you calm down a little bit? Jesus. There you go. Um, I would rather have <clears throat> longer spans between sequels than get on like a Call of Duty recycling binge 100 percent, particularly for titles like zelda and splatoon i, I didn't play uh, xenoblade chronicles but it looks like it's a high quality game but things like mario kart things Ma well, like mario kart is a different story we'll talk about <laughs> mario kart I things like mario, mario and rabbit rabbits I, I mean, things like Kirby. Splatoon I, 3 also is looking a lot like Splatoon 2. 
Splatoon yeah. 3, everything in Splatoon 3 that I've seen looks like it could be Splatoon 2 DLC. But Which I is, digress. Which goes Yo! back to my argument that five years have passed. Just saying. Brian, welcome in, my friend. Um, welcome, okay, welcome. let's let's so, yeah, kick you, this let's kick this thing off with the yeah. You can get rid news. of the graphic now that we're we've got that done. Okay. Let's let's dig into number this. one. This was a hell of a game to start. No intro, no nothing. They just jumped right into the direct with the reveal of Fire Emblem Warriors: Three Hopes, mm -hmm. not Three Wishes, but Three Hopes. Um, Interesting title. I like it. Well, okay, so you got the three hopes because I'm assuming it's going to play off the three houses theme yeah. that was in the last mainline Fire Emblem game. Um, but to, I'm not sure how people feel about this. A lot of Fire Emblem fans are probably a little disappointed, um, but it's a Warriors game. So if you're not familiar, Dynasty Warriors... What state is known for its small drinks? Minnesota. Thanks there, Brian, for dropping so some. For those of you who are listening here. at home, we have a, uh, a fan of the Nintendo's page. His name is Brian, and he comes to almost all of our streams and drops in the best dad jokes. The worst ever. dad jokes, which are <laughs> the best. Um, so, yeah, Dynasty Warriors is the kind of like one versus 100, you know, large scale battlefield using huge moves to kick 20 people's ass at a time. Um, Hyrule Warriors, if you never played Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors was the latest Nintendo crossover, and I think the latest Warriors game in general. Um, but now we have a Fire Emblem themed Warriors game, and I'm actually a little bit interested i'm more interested in this than i was the zelda version and i don't know why i've never played a fire emblem game but just for some reason this universe makes it looks like it makes more sense for this format of game okay i i liked the zelda uh, games that were released. But... Yeah, because you played the first Tyro Warriors, right? Yeah, I, I did not play the second one. Although I should have, because I've heard some good things about it as it being a prequel to some of the story for Breath of the Wild. So, But who has the time? There's too many games. Yeah, you got to make tough too many decisions. Games. Agreed. Um, yeah, no likelihood. I would, uh, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll, I was about to say rent it. Um, maybe I'll check it out of the local library, which PSA for the millionth time your local library has Switch games for free. You check them out for free. It's like renting them, only it's for free. Every time I, I bring it up, I was in Cham's stream earlier today, and someone was like, oh, yeah, like, oh, what do you think about the new Pokemon? I'd like to try it. I'd like to test it out. And guess what I said? In the library, you can. For free. Yeah, so <laughs> don't forget. Your local library. I'm married to a librarian, so it's like, it's like you know, um, it's a little more obvious to me. <laughs> but yeah, this looks like something I would take out uh, for for a weekend at the library, see it, and then maybe buy it on sale. But it's more of a time thing than a money thing. I mean, my fiance is a bookworm. That's close enough. Yeah, just worm your way right in the library. Um, <laughs> okay, next up on the docket, probably the docket. The Probably the game that I am most excited for. So, I know very little about this game series, because oh. apparently this isn't the first one. Hold on, hold on. You Tell, uh, tell me your thoughts. I'm going to grab something real quick. Yeah. I just thought So, was... the game we're talking about was next that was released in the Nintendo Direct was Mario Strikers. And this is Mario Strikers Battle League. You take two arenas... Kind of like a rugby football type thing with the different Mario Party people, and they attack each other. It looks like a lot of fun, and the fact that it's a multiplayer game is very interesting. The fact that there's a competitive nature to it is very interesting. So I'm excited to try it from my local library for free. For free? As Presto would, <laughs> as Presto would say. Look at this, I guys. Look, I'll... look. I have an early copy of it. It's early copy. It's a pre-release. It's a beta. 
Um, from the Wii. So this, I think, I think this was the last Strikers game that came out. Was for sure. the Wii. Uh, so it's been a while. Does this have a year on it? Yeah, I, I don't think, think so. This is like Nintendo Wii. It's old. Two thousand and seven? No way. That's old as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is it actually in here? Oh, it's still in here. I <laughs> you thought you just had the case? Yes. So many old games. I just had the cases, and the the games are gone. <gasps> Oh, I'm going to play this if I ever find something that can run it. Jeremy in chat, my PlayStation 5 is taunting me. I downloaded Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West last night, but the game is locked until the 17th, which is the release. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. Data mine it, Jeremy. Um, There's people who out there figured out how to get past it, I'm sure, but I I hear you. No, they probably... They probably let you preload most of it but they probably leave like some important parts out and it's like day one patch. yeah you'll have a day one download that you have to do i'm sure yeah. um i have a i have a wii right behind me but it is a wii that Brick. only it only runs a modded version of super smash Bros. melee and the disc drive doesn't work oh so just use my imagination although there's probably an emulator somewhere online yeah um but yes so I played, obviously, I played this game, um, and I'm You're excited much, about it. I'm excited about it. It was fun, and I wasn't, like, hardcore into it, but there's a couple things. The fact that you can play eight people on a single Switch is amazing. That instantly shoots it up on the list of my interest because it Couch becomes... co-op battle it, games? so little games that you can play eight people on. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it can be casual. Like I can have like my nephews and my kid play it. Like that's, that's a big deal. Um, and then of course that it's got online. Hopefully the online is not terrible, but with this kind of game, I would think it's probably going to be okay. I don't Um, like that. I didn't play the series. I don't know too much about the series, but the simple fact that they're adding customizable gear is huge because you can customize the individual character you're choosing to play for your play style and for the stats that you're looking to use on the battlefield. That so that is the other big thing for me. For those of you who've been following Nintendo long enough, they've released a game recently called uh, the Mario Golf game where there's been a lot of additions to it and they've given a lot more content to it. It's a competitive game but you can attack your opponents on the golf course in order to help give you the edge in order to get ahead. Um, And they've added some customizations with different clubs and outfits and stuff, which for Nintendo, I like they're really getting also for a golf game. That's like not where you would think there would be They're leaning into the competitive aspect of these games. I think that's where you're going to see this platform like really climb because they've, in the past have not been very competitive friendly. Yeah, this so is this, interesting. This is Mario Mario Strikers Battle League and like you said, eight players on a Switch, customizable gear. Like I think this is exciting. It's nice to see those like modern competitive game mechanics starting to creep into mainline yeah. things. Because that's always been like a part of Splatoon, but like that's the only much, game. That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think in previous... Nintendo as a whole, as an, in, as an industry and as a platform, they have not been very high, high level competitive. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy's... I'm not even going to read those comments because he's getting yeah. ahead. Jeremy, he's getting we're, ahead. we're getting to it. I we're have a lot of it. feelings about that last comment, Jeremy. Just, we're just get hang there. in there. We're getting there. Um, so you can also have have, clubs of up to 20 people, which is cool. And it's interesting that they limited it to 20 people because then it's like sort of important who you have on your roster, right? Yeah. We will have a Nintendads club. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The next game that they announced, which to Presto's I, I can never on my screen. You're over here, but I think you're over here. On my screen, you're this way. 
Um, yeah, yeah, you're over here. Uh, so, to Presto's excitement, Splatoon 3. He's been talking about Splatoon 3 ever since Splatoon 2, because Splatoon 2 had some short miscomings that we all hated. But Splatoon 3 is announced at the last Direct, and we were so excited about it. You can go back and watch it, and Presto, like, lose his mind. Splatoon 3, the nugget that they gave us during this Direct, I felt almost was not Splatoon 3, but, like, almost had nothing to do with the game. It was like, this is a a game mode that we're also going to have in our game. So, yeah, so it's... They did the entirety of the Direct's share of Splatoon 3 news um, was Salmon Run. They featured... So if you if you didn't play Splatoon 2, Salmon Run is a cooperative mode where basically you play against waves of enemies and you try to get a high score and you get rewards. And it's it's fine. It's definitely not like any place that I spent any significant amount of time playing in Splatoon 2. Like, Splatoon 2 is the PvP, right? The, the fun back and forth Splatoon. They added Salmon Run, which is a co-op mode, which was fine. That's cool. And I guess this is their way of saying Salmon Run is going to persist into Splatoon 3. Because it wasn't in, there was no co-op in Splatoon 1. So co-op in Splatoon 2 is new. This is their way of saying we're bringing it back and we're adding new things. And they featured some new bosses. They featured a new mechanic. So basically you have to like get these eggs to a basket and now you can throw the eggs to your teammates which seems like not important but when you're actually playing like that's a that's a game changer for like how you play um but then that was it and everything that i saw in that if they would have said new upcoming patch for splatoon 2 we're adding new enemies and some new mechanics to salmon run for splatoon 2 i would be like oh okay that's cool maybe i'll try that out um, but it's, it's for Splatoon 3, and I'm just like, okay. Which... Like, that's all you're Salmon, gonna show? Like, there's a Salmon new game? Run, Salmon Run was just an aspect that you could play Yeah, it was Splatoon a side 2. mode. We have gotten very little about what they're bringing in for Splatoon 3, as far as movements and mechanics and gyro Anything controls. New. And we we need more. For a game yes. that's coming out this year, for a game that's very competitive, for the, the real hardcore players who really want to get into this, like, we need more. This, seeing this reinforces my opinion that Splatoon 3 is just going to be Splatoon 2.5. 2. Because I feel like yeah. if there was some big, fundamental, amazing change, either they're keeping it under wraps because they're going to announce it, blow everybody's mind, and then be like, and here's the release date, and we're having uh, server tests next week. Like, they might be holding it back for the crucial moment, I hope. I hope. Um, but everything I've seen so far, you could you could trick me easily into thinking it's Splatoon 2 footage. I would say the I'm biggest news... I'm going to news... raise your hype, and instead I'm going to give you... Pokemon Arceus's marketing and then say, you're getting nothing. Wait, you're getting what? I'm going to raise your hype. You, uh-huh. you're, all the things that you think that you're going to get and all the things that they could announce later, yeah. that little nugget of things you just said, and I'm going to say, that's all nice, but then look at Pokemon Arceus and what they did with the mechanics and how they did not talk about that and did not market that well, and I'm going to say, this is not coming. What do you mean? This is not coming. All the things that you just asked for. Oh, all the things yeah. that you. Yeah, it's because yeah. because of how they played That's Pokemon true. Arceus. But then again, get it. then again, Pokemon Arceus was not something I was particularly interested in until people started playing it, and they're like, "Oh no, it's really good." So and had they marketed it better, we would have known that. Yeah. So I mean, it could go. Then it could go either way. There's. Are you <laughs> saying there's a chance? 
Um, probably <laughs> the biggest piece of Splatoon news that I didn't even realize until I rewatched and started like going over it is that we did get confirmation that Splatoon 3 is launching in summer of 2022. Which is which, cool. Like, we gotta get, we gotta get some real news soon then, right? I would be I would be surprised if we did not get some sort of sp- Splatoon. Like I would love for them to be like first week of March Splatoon Direct. Like that's all I want to know. That's all I want to hear. Um, but that also means that Sunbreak and Splatoon are both coming out in the summer, which is exactly what I did not want to happen. Because yeah, one of them, have the two on top of each other. Yeah, mm-hmm, one of them's gonna get neglected, and it's probably not gonna be Sunbreak. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough to balance those two things. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, next up, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby I, in the I, Forgotten Land. I I'm sorry. I was cracking up at this. I was. As somebody who's not a huge Kirby fan who did not play a lot of Kirby games when he was younger, I'm not necessarily excited for anything Kirby because I'm not invested into the franchise. But I can tell you that with what I think of the Kirby franchise, they should be releasing more. Well, they released Mouthful Mode. (laughs) That was... You can't fit any more! It's full. I'm, s- I'm sorry. I I cracked up. You, there's Although the video. The video it could there. be, it could be another take on Happy with Mario, and it ends up being a mechanic that everybody loves. I mean, I think this. I think people who like Kirby games are gonna love this game. This looks like a really good Kirby game. Okay. This looks like a really good Kirby game. I. I've played Kirby games. I've played multiple Kirby games. I played the Nintendo 64 one. Uh, I think there was one on GameCube or Wii. Um, my favorite Kirby game is Kirby Superstars for the Super NES. That's peak Kirby game. And Kirby's Dream Land 2, where you can get the little animals and stuff. Um, so I'm probably not going to get it. Um, but I think it is a good game for kids like i think that's gonna be a hit with like the younger the younger like tweens teens and younger um and i think there's the nostalgia factor for parents and then it's just a good game kirby's a classic um it's cool that they are introducing mouthful mode and that you can swallow cars and and like tables and i think there was a fridge or a washing machine like that's very that's very in line with Kirby. It is cool. I, the one thing, the one thing that I did like that I saw in the trailer. For those of you who did not just get my reference, Woo Wee is Ooh, the sound Wii. effect from Banjo Kazooie, and he turns into a washing machine. And so. he's a happy little washing machine. Um, <laughs> I will say I do like the little bit of depth that they're added. Again, modern modern elements working their way into Nintendo franchises, Kirby, for the first time ever, has some more traditional RPG and leveling elements in that you can level up individual copy abilities. So when Kirby swallows a fire guy, you get the base fire ability, but at some in some method, whether it's collecting things or XP, you can level up your fire thing. So when you get the fire copy ability, it's not just like little fireball. It's like, here comes the sun. Um, So that is really cool because that allows you to customize and gives you a little bit more depth and nuance. Um, So who knows? This also might be a library, a library weekend, like one shot. That's a library. I have a feeling that the the game's going to be really short though, the campaign, because Kirby games are not typically super long unless there's some like hidden stuff that you have to like go back and get a game that i am excited about was announced though was it nintendo switch sports (laughs) i mean i'll be honest with you i probably won't get it because there's too many other things (laughs) 
too think, many other. You think you're not getting it? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many other things on our list. You don't. You don't. So I can already tell you that you are gonna get it because, because the Nintendo's are gonna have to play it with our friends. Because as soon as the two, so they had like the two hosts or whatever. Yep. Um, they did the thing, and they're like, let's try it now. And it's like, okay. And they had the two, the cameras of the two guys standing up on either yep. side of the screen, and then they had the game in the middle. And everybody in the chat that was watching, me and everybody in the chat were immediately like, oh, we're doing this. All of this, we're doing this. Really? Holes, holes will be punched in ceilings and walls, but we are doing this. I don't care if you can barely stand up in your streaming room. We are oh, doing I, it. I have the the ability to set up a second camera in the the adjacent bedroom. It's little Red's room, but I, I will Does set up. Does it have a, a TV that you can play a game on, though? I can just turn my monitor uh. so it faces the room. Okay, MacGyver, we'll see how that a, works. I got, a, got a big old swivel mount up here for my second monitor. I'll just swivel okay, it out. Okay, that the... works. Um, but yes, oh my god. I can't, like, why are they just doing this now? Why? Oh. I don't understand this. How did, how did Ring Fit, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe the success of Ring Fit is, is why this is even happening. Yeah, but with the success that this game had on prior platforms, you would have thought that they would have started with this. I know. That's what I'm saying. If they didn't start with it, they didn't think it was worth it. And I think the thing that changed their mind was how crazy popular Ring Fit was. Because Ring Fit made the top 10 best-selling yeah. Switch games. I own a, wing, a Ring Fit. I think you even it's, used it once, right? No, it's You've still never in the, used it? It's still in its original packaging. Oh my god. I might sell it back. I was going to say, sell it and then buy buy the Switch Sports. Now that you mention it, yeah. So, the thing... So, it's, it's exactly what you would expect. It's all the things. They have badminton. They have some new things. But, they have a leg strap that you can put your Joy-Con on to play soccer. And that I'm, is going to cause people to injure themselves in whole new ways. And I am I here love for it. it. I am I here for love it. it. So many pets are going to get kicked by accident. <laughs> and I don't advocate for that, but it's going to happen. <laughs> pets and small children, watch out when you hear that. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. Anyway, I'm very excited. Uh, so let's get some I, dates we have all the dates i haven't even been saying the dates but we have the dates i rearranged your list on purpose to bring this next game up i want to talk about this okay i don't know what game it is because i'm looking i'm trying to find talking about disney speed storm Ooh. Oh, by the way, so, uh, Switch Sports comes out April 22nd. So, a little ways away. Continue. So, free-to-play Disney race car game. I Free-to-play anything usually comes with either a, a, a paywall of some kind or a quality decrease. I'll be honest, what we saw in the direct has me intrigued. And I would argue that this is the Mario Kart that we're not going to get. This is the Mario Kart that we won't get. This is Mario Kart 9. The 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 characters that were in this, quality. The art style, quality. This is good. It does look good. It looks and good. I can tell you right now, because we're going to talk about Mario Kart next, I think Nintendo made a mistake. Disney, Disney Speedstorm. I got so excited. I, at first, I was like, ew, a fr Disney Racer. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, and it's yes. free. I'm like, this is how I can get my friend group to stop making me play Mario Kart 8. 
I'm ex- I am excited for it. I am excited for it. I will yep. play it. And um, it's free, which means that we can play it with everyone in chat yes. online on a Friday stream, yes. and everybody can download it, and we all can race. It could be a Nintendo Grand Prix. Uh, I'm. When does it come out? You sent it summer. to me. Summer. Oh, why did you do that to me? It's summer. It, it says summer. Yeah. So many games on this list say summer. Damn it. I don't have time. I don't have time for all these games coming out at the same time. I'll be honest with you. My work schedule in the summer is going to triple. So yeah, this is I, this I is you. like this is like this is like like it was four months ago all over again when all these games came out at once. Yep. But so, I'm actually interested in a lot of these games. This game is going up against the big competitor of this entire thing. And uh, March 18th, Mario Kart DLC is coming Chocobo out. GP. Oh, sorry. You said competition. <laughs> I just assumed you were talking about Chocobo GP because that's coming out in March. Um, Mario yes. Kart 8 Booster Course. Now, oh. for those of you who don't know, let's, let's clear the slate right now. Mario Kart 8 was an original Wii U game that was deluxed and then brought to the Switch. <laughs> deluxed. It was deluxe and then brought to the Switch. You know what they Mario call that Kart... in France? They call it a Royale with cheese. <laughs> it was deluxe and brought to the Switch, and it's called Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And in its entirety, has 48 uh, courses in the game. So this Mario Kart 8 Booster Course has an additional 48 courses bringing the grand total of courses to be played on an original Wii U game to, what, what do we say, 96. 96. 96, basic math, got it, done. So, so, the thing that kills me is during the thing, and you can see this in every single reaction video, and I think they did this on purpose, um, they they debated everybody because they went, they were the, like the guy's like, so, many of you have been enjoying Mario Kart 8 Deluxe since its release with the Switch, and everybody leaned forward in their chair and went, yeah. oh. So, we in order to Mario milk Kart this 9? cow a little harder, we've decided to release DLC courses. Uh, oh, and everyone so, open their mouth a little bit. I'll be honest with you. We talked about, on our podcast, uh, Mario Party. And how they're they're going to at some point create a Mario Party online service where they can de- you can download DLC to the Mario Party platform and add new courses, add new games, add new mini games. Well, they did they did do Mario Party, yes, superstars, which yes. I think there will be DLC for. But yes, that's, I think that's we talked about this before before they released that, and then they released that game mario party uh all stars Mm -hmm. and i was like this is an interesting concept you and i talked about on the podcast they could do this with their reoccurring platforms like mario kart and i thought for sure that we were going to get a mario kart all stars and it was going to be that type of thing and i would have been excited for that but I'm Nintendo. not excited for this. So, for anybody who's like, what, what is the exact thing? So, the Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pass um, is going to feature six we quote, waves. We, we put quotes around pass for those yeah. of you who are listening in audio because it's a pass. It's a DLC that is given to you and you pay in full the twenty four ninety nine. But so, there's a caveat. Yeah, it's going to be 25 bucks for 48 remastered. I'll also throw some air quotes around remastered. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, $25 for 48 remastered courses. And it's going to come in six waves now through the end of 2022. 
Um, so, so for those of you, because I like to reiterate something to the point that I break it, beat it a dead horse into the ground. Six waves. What is it like every month, every quarter? What, what was it? Uh, well, not every week. Six. It'll be like every, roughly every month. It won't be every other month. No, it'll, it'll be, be like maybe about every month. You're going to get Jord. Nice, Jord. What's up, Gamalel? Welcome in. We are so, we are just about. We are talking about the, the most hot topic of this Mario of the Kart Direct. remastered courses. So you're gonna so, get courses pretty frequently for twenty five dollars. Through you're gonna the rest pay twenty five dollars up front, and you're gonna get a, a. So for those of you who are doing your math at home, the current game has forty eight courses. In the 48 courses, I think we calculated... Uh, let me pull up a calculator and I'll tell you exactly. Um, 48 divided by 4 is 12. So there's a total of 12 cups that are in the original game. Which means that every month... No, it's not going to be every month. It's going to be... No, because we're already in fast. February. Yeah, it's going to be faster than that. It's going to be faster than that. Anyway, but they're not doing it by cups. They're doing it in six yeah, waves. They're, they're doing it in, in six waves. So it's which going to be is, two cups per wave. Two cups, yeah. It's going to be two cups per wave, and you're going to get four courses in each cup. So eight courses each wave, uh, essentially, yeah, is what you're going to get. eight courses in six waves. So, I, so this is how I feel about this. On the one hand, if you love Mario Kart 8 and you've been dying for new Mario Kart, this may scratch that itch for you. $25 to basically have completely new courses, doubling the course size for Mario Kart is I'm sorry. pretty I'm sorry. cool. You, you just said completely new courses. Oh, remastered courses. They're not new courses. Oh, courses. These are courses we've played before Yo, on other platforms. Jessica, thank you for liking the stream. Um, yeah, so on one end, if you really love Mario Kart and you're dying for new stuff, this is going to scratch that itch for you, and it's going to be on a drip feed, so it's going to be like an exciting thing. This is going to really keep people plugged in to Mario Kart. And for that, I am happy for people who want to play this. I'll play this. I mean, I'll play the, the new courses. So the other thing that's also that we didn't mention yet is... You get these 48 courses for free if you have the Nintendo Online expansion. Which, which nobody does because it's it's worthless. But it's starting it's starting to look attractive now. Because if you have Mario Kart and you have uh and you have Animal Crossing, it's already worth it. It's already well, worth it. Yeah, if you're if you're into that, yeah, if if, if you're you like, in that game, yeah. I mean, honestly, so I know my, my friend group, you know who you are. You know exactly who you are. You know which text thread and group chat I'm talking about. You guys strong on me and force me to play Mario Kart constantly, and I do it kicking and streaming, but I play it. So this has me considering, considering the Nintendo Online expansion because the 64 games are cool. If I had access to the 64 games, I'd play them here and there. I'd play them with my son. Like, I might stream them sometimes. Especially if they add, uh, like, Jet Force Gemini or GoldenEye or stuff like that. So I, I told think... everybody, and I am st I am sticking to it. My hand on the Bible or the Koran or yeah, whatever yeah, you want to... Yeah, we know. I will not get that get pass unless they bring back Donkey Kong 64. They will. They have to. They have to. I'm holding on to my wallet and I'm holding on to it tight. You're not um, getting my money, Nintendo. You're not. So so that's that's the sunshine and flowers. On the other hand, and this is probably how I feel more, um, they have milked this fucking game for like almost a decade. This Mario Kart they have, oh, yeah. Yes, Mario Kart 8. And and that's fine. If people are still buying it from a business perspective. Why would you make a new thing and kill the sales of that with a new game? Just put yeah. more stuff into it. So on that business part of it, I I, I respect that. Um, but 
we won a new game. They keep milking this game. And the reason I keep saying remastered courses is because these are all courses that are quote-unquote remastered from previous games. Of the eight courses that are coming in the first wave, three of them are from Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game. Really? Yes. So almost half the courses in the first thing are from the mobile game. That are courses that are designed to be played in the mobile game. That have mobile... That Basically, they don't look like they're remastered. They look like they are copy and pasted from the mobile game into Mario Kart 8. Even if you look at the art styles a little more closely, you can see that the courses that are in Mario Kart 8, some of them are really nice looking. But these look not great. They are they are oh. just taken from the mobile game and put into Mario Kart 8. I'm going to just theorize here. How many courses are in the mobile game? I have no idea. I would venture that every single wave is going to have some courses from the mobile game. And therefore, I'd venture to wager mm-hmm. that you're right. They are not truly remastered. They are copied, pasted, ripped and pulled yeah. from existing games that are already out there. And they're just like, we didn't do any work. We just added it to this this pile to make now, it look pay bigger. for it. Yeah. What's up, Jojo? Welcome in. Jojo! Um, I will appreciate when they do great remasters of Super Nintendo Mario Kart stages, of Mario Kart 64 stages, because those oh. you can't get away with copy and pasting. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna throw a lot of courses in from Double Dash, from Tor, from Seven. Wait, wait, was Seven Double Dash? Uh, I think it was. But they're gonna there's gonna be a lot of courses that are not so remastered as much as just re like just just right there. And that's that's kind of what I have an issue right, with. with. Uh, I I we discussed this off camera earlier today, and I think I think Corporal Nosage thinks that if I was on the director's board of the Nintendo and the Mario Kart team, I would have said, let's build a brand new, absolutely fancy Mario Kart All-Stars online system. Mario Kart and Infinite, Mario Kart Ultimate, Mario, Mario Kart, Kart Forever. Mario Kart That's Infinite. That's the one word they haven't used yet, Mario Kart Mar- Forever. And we release this Mario Kart 9 with absolutely no new maps. But it is released with all 96 maps that we currently own together. We don't charge you the full $60 price. We charge you a $40 price or a $30 oh, price. They are absolutely charging that much. The, Manda, the what's ten- up? Welcome in. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Oh, they God. released this Mario Kart 9, this Mario Kart Infinite, with all 96 courses at a $40 price tag. And then, first of next year, they announce new DLC for 30 bucks, And they can continue yeah. to do that. Objection. Speculation. <laughs> Sustained. That's yeah, what there's a, there's a lot done. of there's a lot of things they should have could have would have done, but they're repackaging their old box lunch and trying to feed it to us as a hot meal, and I don't appreciate that. The bigger issue I have with this is, is I know I'm going to be roped into playing this. Yeah, I know my friends, I know my family, I know everybody. I'm, I know I'm going to be forced. I love the Mario Kart series. I love the Mario Kart series. I will pay this. I will pay this and I will play it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I know I'm going to have to. I'm mad about it, but I'm going to do it. Lol, you sustained your own objection. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it works. There's only two of us. Okay. So now that we got the Mario hype out of the way, and we can have this conversation. Like, I'm way more excited out. for Disney Speedstorm than I am for new yes, Mario Kart regurgitated. That's, that's what I was going to say. You can cut this entire Mario Kart segment out and put it to the side. I am still more excited about Disney 
than I am with uh, the Mario Kart. I think you'll get more replay value. It's whole new maps, whole new characters, whole new attacks or effects. Like, I'm excited for that. For free. For free. Um, so the next game that they announced, which we remember kind of that wait, remember that one time you thought this episode was going to be done in an hour, and I was like, nah, no. Nah. What time? What, what, it's been oh, fifty-five we're, minutes. We're exactly <laughs> at an hour now. Uh, what's up, Ryan? Welcome in. Um, we'll get through this. Xeno Blade Chronicles Three. Xeno Blade series is a big deal to a lot of people. Xeno Blade series is beautiful. It looks really right? good. I know nothing about it. I know everybody talks like this. <laughs> Ryan, hello, friends. Um, yeah, Xenoblade Chronicle looks good. I've almost played it, but I haven't, and I probably won't. But I'm excited for Xenoblade fans because I know a lot of people that I trust their taste in games that have said Xenoblade is amazing, and so I'm excited that they are getting it. And when does it come out? Please don't say summer. Where is it? Mm. September! Hey, look at that. (laughs) Um, By the way, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Super Extra We Don't Need It thing pack is coming out on March 18th, so just over a month away. Um, So for... The next game, which I also have absolutely nothing to talk about, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Remastered. Yes. So I played Advanced Wars on that right there, Advanced Wars 1, on that little beautiful Game Boy Advance right there. Um, And it's a good game. It's a good, uh, like, it's it's a turn-based strategy game, and it's a tactical RPG so you kind of, everything's on a grid, and you move around, and you have the tanks, and you have artillery, and you have planes, and you have soldiers, and, and all this kind of stuff. I actually think you Starcraft. would like it. It's StarCraft. Mm, but it's turn-based. Yeah, it's turn-based 2D StarCraft. Yeah, so I, I actually think you would like it. It's got a lot of charm. It's got a lot of very specific advanced war things. And Do I look like a guy who's got charm? No, but that's why you need it. <laughs> It's a good game. It's a good game. I, if I didn't have a million other games that I was interested in, I might consider picking it up because it's really good. And I don't know if it has online multiplayer. That would definitely be a big selling point for me. Um, but it's cool that it's coming out. It's definitely a solid game if you like that uh, like strategy. I think I actually think a lot of people who have played Fire Emblem, like the regular Fire Emblem games would like advanced wars okay i think if you like fire emblem you would like advanced wars so there the next game this oh my god i still don't understand this i i'm holding on to my switch right now because (laughs) it's just it's gonna start overheating with us just thinking about this i want to play this game i want to believe the simple act of me saying I want to play this game, I feel like my Switch is crying, so I'm keeping it safe. Because some computers can't handle this game. Your computer almost couldn't handle this game. You had to my, do a lot. My computer couldn't handle this game when I was trying to port it to my Oculus. I had I had to play with some things. I can play the game perfectly fine on my computer, because my computer's a beast. But that's No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Those, for those of you who don't know, No Man's Sky is a what's it called? Not strategically generated, or not randomly procedurally generated. Procedurally generated. Procedurally, procedurally generated world building, expansion, explore, Space exploration, space exploration. Game. So in No Man's Sky, there are a near, and this is going to sound crazy if you've never talked about No Man's Sky before, but basically, No Man's Sky procedurally generates an entire galaxy. And when I say an entire galaxy, I don't mean like, oh, a couple hundred star systems. Take the amount of stars and planets that are in our galaxy. So like, I don't, I actually don't even know, probably millions. Um, and no man's sky generates basically 
the virtual <laughs> the virtual equivalent of a mm. galaxy. So there are hundreds and th- hundreds of thousands of star systems. There are m- literally millions of planets, and you can go to all of them. And when you discover one of them, four hundred or- billion. There is four hundred billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So how many? How many of how many? How does that stack up to No Man's Sky? Um, let's see. Let's just let's just Google how many. Uh, Planets in No Man's Sky. Bum, bum, bum. No. There's no way. There's no way that's true. It's there's a hundred billion. There's a hundred billion planets in our galaxy. There's no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is this is our galaxy. The silliest the, the, thing I've ever read. The Milky Way galaxy contains a hundred billion planets. Wait, are, are you? Don't Google it. Don't Google it because I want to see your face when I say this to you. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to know how many unique? Because every time, basically every time somebody turns on the game, you're getting. Planets that have already been generated by other players, because when you discover a planet, everything on that planet gets claimed and gets a tag that it was discovered by you. So all the fauna, all the planet, the system, everything. So when you discover it, forever for everyone, so it is multiplayer, but it's not like super focused. Well, I guess now it's more super focused on multiplayer. Um, So but if I go go any further, before you go any further... Every planet that is generated within the game has its own atmosphere, has its own plant life, has its own animal life, has its own mineral deposits, and every single one of those things it has unique. its own ecosystem, has its own uh, weather patterns, has its own type of geothermal uh, or weather storms that it can have, it has its own gravitational pull, it has its own environmental hazards, all of those things are completely procedurally generated for each new planet that's developed because you'll never find two, two planets, planets that are the same. So, and when ever. you discover a planet, if someone else comes across that planet, it will say originally oh. discovered by Corporal Nosage and yeah. everything and that you scanned Nossage. and come. So, take take a guess. Take a guess at how many unique planets you think there are in No Man's Sky. I, I'm going. So, the, how many? How many did you say were in the Milky Way? The Milky Way galaxy has 4 billion stars, and out of those 4 billion stars, there is 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy. 100 billion, 100 billion. unique individual planets in, in the Milky Way. In real life. We're not talking about the game. We're talking about in real life. So how many, being that is the, the reality scale, how many planets do you think are in No Man's Sky? Talking about a video game. Yes. Talk about a video game. So take that, a guess. That does have that's some. That's going to run on the of... Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to run on this. <sighs> so, how many, how many do you think? Take a guess. Because I have the answer and you're not going to. I'm going to, because of your reaction and because it's a computer generated thing, I'm going to assume it's bigger than reality. So, uh, I didn't I'm... know reality when you when when i read that in my reaction and then you told me what the reality was and i was like Pff. so uh, just make your guess 150 billion you're not even remotely close <laughs> what 18 quintillion unique planets are in no man's sky so we're not just talking about the milky way galaxy this game expands to all galaxies. Yeah. 18. There are over 18 quintillion. That number is so long, I don't even think I can put it on the screen. 18 quintillion different planets in this So game. as as of 2020, we have 2 trillion known galaxies that our scientists have discovered two trillion known galaxies known galaxies how many known 
planets. Galaxy. Man, that is that's insane this is this is going so far off the rails for this so the point is no man's sky gives you a a, an absurd amount of variety of you'll never land on the same planet twice it's multiplayer so you can build a base together you can explore together there's a story so you're not just like floating randomly through space and somehow this game is going to play on the switch i don't think we know if it's cross play or not, that would be crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna check. Crossplay? Um, my mom. Um, I don't know. We pro. It's probably not. It's probably not gonna be available. Like that, we don't know yet. Um, but. No Man's Sky is cross-platform between every other console. So I would, if I had to guess, I would say that it probably will be, which is nuts. No Man's Sky is the best space exploration game there is, as far as I'm concerned. It's great. It had a really rough start. It's come a very long way. If you like space exploration games, you're going to want to get it on the Switch, assuming that it runs which I still don't understand how how it's going to run on the Switch. It's going to be nuts. <clears throat> so, that's No Man's Sky. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's coming to the Switch. Um, next, more sci-fi things, and we're going to start to move a little quicker because the, these are going to become less interesting as we go on. Yeah. Um, I've Portal 1 and 2. So I'm a huge Portal fan. Those of you who know anything about me, I one of my first games that I ever played was Half-Life. So the Half-Life universe is extremely interesting to me. And Portal is a phenomenal game. Portal 2 is just as good, although I argue Portal 1 is still better. Um, The fact that this is coming to the Switch, like, Yet again, these are old games that are now finally coming to the Switch. So, but like, like there's are... kids out there, there's kids out there who've never played Portal. Correct. So... so, like, this is exciting that a whole new generation of kids will be able to access to play this game. There's a lot of critical thinking that's involved. There's a lot of cool songs and mysteries and backstories that go behind all this. And, Easter... and there's whole Easter eggs that are expanding the Half Life universe. I like. I would love to say that more money that's being funneled into the Half-Life franchise will hopefully mean that one day we'll have a new Half-Life game. And yeah, I know one day we'll have a new Mario Kart too. I know saying that <laughs> is like saying I'm going to be alive when the sun explodes. But yeah, like, well, no man's sky. You might be. <laughs> welcome, welcome back, Jeremy. Um, yeah, I'm excited that it's coming out. I'm not going to get it because I've played those games to death on PC. Um, yeah. but that's cool. That's cool. It's good to see it. It's good to see it coming. Um, the next, who said they were looking forward? I think, yeah, it was Jeremy. Chrono Cross. Yeah. Chrono Cross is coming to the Switch. Uh, that's cool. That's a, that's, that's a beloved, got. that's a beloved RPG. Yeah, I've never played it. Um, it's great. I'm surprised it took this long because, uh, Jeremy said he has the PlayStation one disc, so it's an old game. So I'm sure that it could have been ported like pretty easily. Um, it's probably like a rights, a rights thing, licensing. Um, so Chrono Cross is coming. That's cool. Yay, Chrono Cross. Um, (sighs) MLB The Show 22 is coming to the cool. Switch. Cool. And I Whatever. have to say, it is one of the worst games. <laughs> the One of the worst big games. Because there's a lot of indie games that are like junk drawer games that Corporal buys on sale for two and a half cents. But <laughs> for this being a major league game, get it? Um, from like a main developer, this game looks really bad. Like... 
like real bad. It's on the Switch. What did you want? No, 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 no. It is not a. It doesn't look like a game on the Switch. It looks like a game that's. It, if you haven't seen the the footage, it looks. I saw so bad. It looks, There's like tearing. Like something... There's weird shit going on with the character it models. Look, it looks like something that came out of the Wii universe of games. No, but it does. Like there's Wii games that look better than this game. It looks jacked up. Okay. It looks like somebody spilled their soda on a computer that was trying to render this game, and they didn't even <laughs> clean it up. They're just like, ah, it'll evaporate. Um, Jeremy says that Chrono Cross is a massive RPG with forty recruitable characters, and you have to finish it twice to claim everyone. Okay, wow. there's more than Chrono Cross than I That's thought. That's pretty cool. Right. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Who dat? Yo, Marvin, Flo, what's up? Thank you for the like, my friend. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome, Marvin. Um, so our... the next game on the list is Live Alive? Uh, yeah. That's all Live, I got to say about that. Live Alive? It's It looks, it actually looks kind of cool. It looks like Octopath Traveler in where there's like a bunch of different characters and they all have like their own like game basically it looks like an rpg like collection where you play through a bunch of different stories as different characters and i'm not sure if the stories are even related um but it looks cool it it, it just reminds me a lot of octopath traveler if you're into like traditional like old school rpgs that looks like it's gonna be fun um sure. taiko no tatsujin uh, is a drumming game, and I've seen the characters from it, and they're adorable, and they do little, it's like a rhythm game. Uh, that is coming out for the Switch. That's cool. Earthbound and Beginnings. Yes, Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. Earthbound being on the Switch is a big deal. It, it's through the Nintendo online service, so anybody who has online, the base online service can yeah. play it, which is cool. Um, because it definitely has a cult following. A lot of people say that if you enjoyed Undertale, you will enjoy Earthbound. Earthbound, yeah. Because a lot of a lot of things in Undertale are modeled mm. after Earthbound, and yeah, it's got it's, the same weird, quirky like. I don't know if it's actually, but it's like very much in the vein of like a spiritual successor. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Undertale is. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy says, OG oh, Earthbound was amazing. Maybe someday we'll get Mother 3 over here. Um, <laughs> Demon Hunter Hinokami Chronicles. So, you probably don't know about this. No, so not at all. This is the Demon Hunter. It's not. It. I guess it's a fighting game. It kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Naruto. Uh, Ninja Storm series, but I don't know if there's PvP in it. But basically, it's a very, very sticks close to the anime, uh, like 3D fighting game of the Demon Hunter series, the Demon Hunter anime. Um, and it's it was really popular. Like, a Cham played it, uh, Fox Uchiha played it, a bunch of people played it. It's been really good. Like people say, it's it's legit. And I'm very surprised that it's coming to the Switch. And I'm very surprised that it was like sandwiched in between two other games in like a 30 second segment. Because this is yeah. a big this is a big game that came out three months ago and it's already being ported to the Switch. And they're just like, oh yeah, that super popular, like one of the most popular animes on the planet got a game which was also really, really popular. And it's coming to the Switch. We're just going to stick it right there next to uh Taiko no Tatsujin and uh and something else. I just like to say that. It's a fun thing <laughs> to say. Um Lego Lego Brawls. I don't know what this game is and they gave like no explanation for it. I yeah. think it's like a Lego platform fighter. I wonder if it's like a Super Smash Bros. It, Lego version. It kind of looks like that because you can build your character and it's like, it kind of looks more like Brawlhalla than yeah. Smash and that it's like slower and there's like items and stuff. 
I don't know. A lot of people are going to buy it because it's Lego. I have yeah. no idea. Like, they, I don't understand. That was, I mean, there's so many games in this Direct. Like, but brawler, brawler games are becoming a lot more popular. I know. We got the DC one. We got... Nintendo um, or... Ni- not Nintendo. Nickelodeon. Yeah, Nickelodeon. There's the uh, Rumbleverse. Well, I guess Rumbleverse is a 3D thing Like that looks like a Knockout City. But the DC yeah. Universe uh, Brawl... I don't remember. They're, they all have yeah, really those... generic names. Yeah. Um, front um, Mission... mission? Is a mech yeah. is a mech RPG? Front uh, so one. It was a like a Funko Pop like cutesy mech game. No, though, that's it? that's a different. That's Gundam SD. Okay, okay. This is a different one. This was an older uh, mech RPG. Front Mission One is coming. Front Mission Two, I think they said is coming soon. Um, but it's a remake for the Switch for people who like that game. Heavy on the RPGs. Yeah. Heavy on the RPGs. Um, speaking of, Triangle Strategy, that I can't believe they didn't change the name for. Um, they said they were going to, and they sure didn't. Uh, it's getting a demo that I think is out now uh, that lets you play through the third chapter. So I don't know how long that is. But it lets you take your progress and continue when the game comes out. I will play anything that's free, so I may play this because it's got such a horrible title, and I need to know. It looks how bad it good, is. though. It looks juicy. I'm gonna play the demo. It looks, and good. I'll let you guys know what I think about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy. So yeah, the Disney. We actually talked about the Disney Kart Racer. It's called Disney Disney Speedstorm. It is coming out on Switch. It's free to play. It looks good. You should play it instead of Mario Kart. Yes. Because we had a whole segment about Mario Kart. We're probably, when it launches, and I think it launches in, let me guess, summer? Summer. (laughs) Does it launch in the, I closed the thing. I think it launches in summer. Um, But we're probably going to do some community nights of that, a little Friday night drag racing. Um, So, yeah. Cuphead DLC. Now, I'll be honest with you, I played the original Cuphead on... The Xbox and me and Lady Sage actually really enjoy some Cuphead. It is a challenging game, yeah. And you aspects. either you neither need some drinks to get through it, or you need to go into it knowing you're going to be frustrated because it is a challenging game. I had no idea because I knew that they did a DLC. I didn't know that they had done three dlcs this is the final dlc oh. where they've added a third character it's a girl I think oh she's yeah a uh chalice yeah Lady yeah she's chalice pretty... chalice chick she's a... i don't remember what her name she's is. a drinking cup of some kind but like this game is legit if you want a challenging old school retro style art like this is the game for you yeah good game so that's cool um metroid dread is getting Weird DLC. Um, the only it's thing the I remember from that. Scrollers. The only thing I remember from that is Metroid Dread is getting an easy mode. So it's getting it's doing both. So it's getting an easy mode, and it's getting Dread mode. So easy mode is going to be an easier mode where you regain health and it's easier. And Dread mode is if you get hit one time, you're dead. Dreadful. And that just sounds gross. Metroid yeah. is way too long of a game. It's not meant to be... That's not meant to happen. Oh, there was hardcore Metroid fans out there who's going to do it. Uh, yeah, but, like, the game is not designed for you to go through it and never get hit. That's why you have, like, six energy tanks by the end of the game. So, I don't... I mean, it's cool that they're adding it, um, but... It doesn't really fill my energy tank very much. Um, they also said a boss rush mode is coming soon in an update. That's cool. That's interesting. Kingdom Hearts Collection is coming. They're all going to be cloud games. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Please, just get, play them on anything I, else. I kind of like the idea of Kingdom Hearts games coming to this platform because I feel like this is the platform where they belong on. 
I don't like yeah. the fact that it's a cloud game. No. Cloud games, just to reiterate, cloud games, if there's too many people playing the cloud game that you're playing, you have to wait in line to play it. Um, if you lose internet connection, the game stops. And for not if, but when they decide that they're no longer going to maintain the servers for said cloud game, your your game evaporates and you have no recourse. Like, that's it. You're renting the ability to play these games. So can I just say that this is the second Disney title that they announced in this Direct? And I'm wondering if there is a better partnership between Nintendo and Disney now. Maybe because Disney did let them put Sora in Smash. I don't know. Uh, I maybe we know something. Maybe we don't. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you know something. I don't know. You have that. You have the insider. Get the insider scoop. Would love to see Metroid. Oh yeah, Super Metroid Remaster would be pretty sick. I would play that. So this next game, Star Wars Force Unleashed. More I Disney. <laughs> I loved. Did you play this? The original Star Wars Force Unleashed. The the I, so this is Force Unleashed one and two. It's going to be together, I believe. It's going to oh, be the really? two game. Okay. And it's, it's going to. It's also going to have an online multiplayer versus mode where you can like attack mm. each other. Mm. They they showed it in the video where they had like a Darth Vader and uh, another guy attacking each other, and it was a versus mode. I don't know if it's online or if it's just couch co op, but the versus mode was cool. That's very interesting. Unleashed is a lot like Dark Souls, but done star wars hmm. yes yes so i mean i'm i love star wars force unleashed i wanted them to expand this further so i i think that's that's cool that it's coming to the platform more that people should cool. play star wars games blah 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 speaking the of games best, you love the best the best the best hands down the best star wars laser combat uh attacking each other game that I have ever played, you'll never guess, Disney Infinity. And that was the what? game, hold on, here they are. That was the game where Disney. they had the oh, little no. figurines. The Farlanders or whatever? I don't know what that is, but they, what was they the, had... What was the other thing that was like the Farlanders, or you had I, to like no buy idea. the little toys, and they you had them. It was before Disney, Disney Infinity. It was what Disney Infinity copied off of. I have no idea what it, what it you was. You had it. You, no, I didn't. I you, had these. No, these you, had, had. you had Disney Infinity Skylanders. I didn't. I never did Skylanders. You son of a bitch, you did. I remember. I, swear, I remember. No, I did Amiibos and Disney Infinity. That was it. You did Skylanders. I did not do anything. This is some sort anyway, of conspiracy. Disney Infinity had a platform where you'd buy these little clear pieces and you'd put them on and then it would open up a world. And in that world, you can play. These allowed you to play the original saga storyline all the way through. Skylanders is the Spyro uh, family. Not me. Sorry. Somebody else. No, it was anyway, you. I'm, I'm, I'll continue. The Disney Infinity uh, version where you, it was like the second one. It was this one. Uh, opened up a dojo where you could take your players into the dojo and go through a uh like an exhibition wave after wave of all the different bad guys from the entire series oh, from episode cool. one to episode uh i think nine at the time when it came out um it had all of the bad guys from all of the series and you could choose which character you wanted to put in the exhibition match and then fight your way through until you've beaten all of them or you can get two players and you can fight each other and as you progress your character, you can unlock new attacks and new force abilities. This game was amazing. And I wish that they kept it around, but Disney discontinued it. Wow. Bad Disney. Jeremy says his kids have 45 Skylander figurines. <laughs> See, it was him. You're thinking of him, not me. Oh, yeah, because I've known him for 
Everything I have is right here. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Um, speaking of games that you like, Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection so, is I, coming I'm to Italian. Switch. I, I'm Italian, if you, haven't, if you haven't been able to tell. And the Ezio Collection is the Italian Renaissance saga. Tutto of bene. The, of the Assassin's Creed series. And I'll have to say that besides Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the Italian Renaissance Ezio uh, uh, storyline is the best, one of the best Assassin's Creed stories that is available. So I am very excited for more people to be able to experience this. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool that... I thought I thought all these games were on Switch already, though. This is the Ezio Collection so it's a remastered version of the games with updated graphics and enhanced things, and all of the DLC bundled together as one uh, package. Okay, so it's a so they may have they may have had maybe like Assassin's Creed something available on the Switch, but not yeah, not this. Um, the last game, and there's a couple little ones that we didn't include because they're just we don't care about them. Um, SD Gundam Battle Alliance. So this is a a chibi, like you said, Funko Pop style yeah. art uh, Gundam. So cute Gundams. It's like um, a Hello Kitty Gundam. What? Yeah, I guess so. Not a not a the dramatic political space warfare of real Gundams. Um, <laughs> yeah, cute Gundams, and it's uh, it's like a Gundam game, but I think it's co op. Maybe you can do versus. It looks cool. It looks interesting. This might be another one that is on the library list. Ooh, that's I like that. The library list. Library list. We should make a Nintendo library list. I'm not going to get it, list. but there's, it's the library list. That should be something that's on our website. Ooh, Nintendo's that website. Let's not talk list. about the website. Let's not talk about the website. Because then <laughs> people are going to start messaging me going, where's the website? <laughs> um, let's see. SD Gundam... Uh, it just says 2022. At some point. At some point it's going to come out. And we'll be here. Yep. Um, That's it. That is it. That's everything, folks. That's it. Oh. What's the side quest? This, well, hold on. Hold on. Hold just on. one second. The only, only real side quest that can be asked is, of everything we've discussed today, what is the one thing that you are A, most excited about, B, least excited about, and C, make it separate or different that you're willing to open your wallet for. Oh, okay. Um, I would say I'm probably the most excited for Strikers because I think that has the most potential to be cool. Now, I also was mildly excited for Mario Aces, the tennis game, and that ended up sucking. Um, so I'm opt, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about strikers. If strikers is good, I will get it. So that also okay. answers the C questions that I will open my wallet and I will buy strikers. If it's good and I will play it and it will be a thing. Um, what am I least? There's a lot, there's a lot of ties for last place for what I'm least interested in. Um, I mean, I don't care about a lot of the RPGs. I don't care about Taiko no Tatsujin, the drumming game, even though I will continue to say it. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing it. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to, I know I'm going to end getting roped into playing these stupid Mario Kart courses. I know it. I know it. I it's am... like when you have to take medicine and you know the medicine tastes bad, but you have to take it to get better. Like, I kn that's what I know. I most likely, like yourself, will be forced to open my wallet for Mario Kart. I would much rather open my wallet for No Man's Sky because I want to see this dumpster fire. I am No I Man's am, Sky. I can't if it's I'm, if it's cross play and cross progression. I might get it on Switch. I, I uh, truthfully, if I if I'm thinking about this, my side quest. Tr the truth is, I'm least excited for 
Mario Kart 8 because I'm disappointed. But I am also it's most the likely two, to open it's my It's the two, it's B and C, the things that <laughs> shouldn't cross over but somehow do. I'm going to end up opening my wallet for Mario Kart 8. And honestly, I'm probably the most excited for Disney Speedstorm. Oh my god. Propaganda. <laughs> That's Disney propaganda coming from you. Um, I am also very excited about uh, Switch Sports. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just don't know if I'll put money into it. You will. You're gonna. <laughs> Trust me. It's gonna happen. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Obviously, I'm gonna get Splatoon 3. That's yeah. no matter no I mean, matter no matter how jacked up it is, even if it's Splatoon 2.5, I'm getting Splatoon 3. Like that's yeah. the non like Mario Kart or uh Mario Strikers could come out and people would be like, oh, it's it's lame, don't get it, and I won't get it. Splatoon 3, I'm going to get. Like, I'll pre-order yeah. it. It's happening. That's the that's the one game in this entire list that is like with certainty, I will get it. This is probably the, yeah, it's the only game on this list that I am with certainty getting. I'll probably get Strikers. I'll probably get um, Switch Sports. I'll definitely play Speedstorm, but it's free, so that doesn't count. Um, but yeah, Splatoon 3 is the only one that's like, take it. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Lady Sage said she wanted a light lunch, so I brought home a case of 50-watt light bulbs. Oh, no. It hurts extra because I heard that one already today. <laughs> and, like, you texted it to me, and I, like, looked at my phone, and I saw you talk about light bulbs, and I'm like, what do you talk? Like, I don't have time to discern your, like, Ikea role play or whatever the hell is going on here. <laughs> Ikea role play. So, before we go any further, those of you who are in our discord channel you have all been upgraded and been given permissions in the discord channel there's also a new channel that is available in the discord channel called dungeons and dragons you do not have permission to get there yet we will have to figure that out because we are going to build something with that nugget and when we do then we'll give people access to that channel but until then the channel is there for you to look at and to torment you with that being said, I spoke to a kid today, or yesterday, not a kid, he's a grown man, but he said that in his day, they played Redneck Dungeon and Dragons, and I had to ask... What does that what, mean? What that meant, and he literally said, you create a redneck character, <laughs> and then you open the game with you probably fixing your truck or going mudding, and... Then something breaks, and then you get attacked by a drunk hillbilly. Oh my god. And I now want to build a Dungeon and Dragons campaign with, like, real-world events. Please, no. I do not I, want to play Dungeons and Dragons Florida Man Edition. I think that would be funny. So Mark! those of you Mark, who are in. in our Discord channel, jump into the Discord channel, say hi, tell us how much you want to do a live-streamed... A live streamed Dungeon and Dragons game. I promise and... we're not going to play Dungeons and Dragons Redneck Edition on the stream. <laughs> no, we we most certainly. Mark, won't. you joined but... the stream at a very weird time. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, come come hang with it on Discord. A lot of the times we're playing games like oh lordy, oh oh geez, Jessica's still here and she heard all that, huh? Um. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, come, if you guys haven't gone, uh, the Discord link should be somewhere in our Facebook, or leave a comment or a message, yeah. uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll hook you up with an invite, but yeah, we play, we play, anytime we're playing games with more than one of us, we're usually on the Discord, even if we're not streaming, so like, the dis I would say our Discord is a pretty active place, like, people chat there every day, there's usually somebody playing something that you can pull into a voice channel, redneck edition good stuff um yeah so with that this concludes our episode but we are going to take a shirt shirt a short commercial break 
get some refreshments, and then we are going to play a little Monster Hunter. Yes, yes. I'm going to rope Corporal into at least a few hunts. At least a few hunts. He's saying, his head say no, but his controller's telling him yes. Um, yeah, but so we'll be back in like five, ten minutes with some Monster Hunter on Switch. Um, and we'll play, we'll stream. It's going to be a short, short Monster Hunter stream. So I got, I got other, I got other things. I got other places to be. No, the places to be. No, I don't. Like your, with your family. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll be doing a short Monster Hunter stream coming up. Uh, other than that, have a good night. Uh, if you're listening on audio, thanks for thanks for listening. We promise that this will be uploaded in a little bit more of a timely fashion than uh, <laughs> the, the last one. Than other episodes. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. If you're listening on audio. I know we've said it like 10 times, but definitely come watch us on Facebook. Even if you don't like Facebook, even if Facebook's not your thing, even if you're afraid of Mark Zuckerberg and his sweet baby rays, come on Facebook. This is where we do the majority of our content. So check it. Uh, I will see you guys in a few minutes. Thanks for joining us. Bye.